start up the same way or should people start to use this as a reset and think differently about how we um, we live on this planet? Can I ask you a quick question a because we got it in the chat, Susan? Did you say how yeah. many total pages are in the new textbook? No, there's 488 pages. So it's um, not necessarily shorter. It's just been reorganized. Thank you. The, um, the, the next way that we've tried to um, update this resource is to make it more accessible for students. We've looked at um, the reading level. We've looked at um, uh, the colors that are used in the book. And so there's a new design, there's a new color palette using colors that are accessible to students. We reorganized it around uh, sections. So we've used a section numbering system. We've looked at narrative passages and condensed them in, in many ways to, um, to make them more concise and easier for students to access information and easier to understand the content that's there. We've also gone back and looked at um, charts and graphs and tried to make them um, less complicated and very um, and, and much easier in terms of trying to find the information in those charts and graphs so it will be more accessible to all students. The third area that we've used um, in terms of updating the material is to add the inclusion of the geographic thinking skills. Now these are different across the country and I'm not quite sure um, which province all of the attendees are from at this point. Some of them use um, different terms in Ontario that they might see in BC versus Manitoba or whatever. Um, but the terms that we use in the book are close enough to what you have in your province that you'll be able to see how we support uh, that information. The geothinking skills look at significance or spatial significance. We look at cause and consequence of events or actions. We look at um, change and continuity. And in some provinces, they use patterns and trends or interrelationships. So we look at um, having the students analyze what they're seeing in terms of patterns and trends and what can they predict might happen. Um, or looking at the past, what happened in the past, how to predict what's happening in the future. There's um, a thinking skill related to judgment and a thinking skill related to perspective. Evidence is one of the geographic thinking skills as well, but the students are using evidence in, um, it's not labeled, but they're using evidence from a variety of maps, getting data from maps, charts, graphs, and photos. There's also cartoons and websites in the book that the students can analyze uh, the information based on the thinking concept categories. The fourth area that we're uh, that we've and, and looked at carefully would be to update questions and activities. Uh, the end of chapter activities have been updated. The categories that we had there in the past, um, the four categories now are knowledge and understanding, thinking critically, apply and connect, and extend your thinking. And there's a range of activities and questions within each of these categories. Um, so the students can build their thinking skills um, and their understanding as they go through each chapter. We've also added in inquiry. And so in the case studies and some of the skill features um, and at the end of, end of chapter questions, we also have an inquiry icon that um, will signal that this is an activity that the students can use and use for further research um, and analyze cases in that inquiry uh, model. We've also updated our ArcGIS activities. In this case, uh, they link to the newest ArcGIS program, the web-based program, I think it's version 10, that is um, an online program. We've worked with uh, Jean Tong at Esri. We've created an ArcGIS quick guide so that um, it helps you use ArcGIS in a general nature. You and your students will have that quick guide. As, but there's also activities that link to chapters within the, in the book. The ArcGIS activities in the book were done by Jonathan Fletcher. Um, he's an Ontario teacher, but has done a lot of work with Esri in this area. His students compete um, uh, every year in the ArcGIS competition, and he's got a good handle on GIS and has created some activities for us that I think you'll also enjoy working on with your students. The last area that we've used for updating would be the, um, the course themes. In the last edition, the book was fo focused around two course themes, globalization and sustainability. And these underlying themes were woven throughout all the chapters and the content was linked back to that so that the students a way to, to look at some of the contents and, and concepts and data that they were working with. 
in this edition, we've added a third theme for quality of life. And um, we feel now with everything else happening in the world, but also globalization sustainability really impact quality of life. So adding this third aspect, this third theme makes a lot of sense. Can we get the next slide, Barbara? Well, you see, I just changed it. Okay. I'm not seeing that, but that's okay. Oh, I'm still seeing the second. I'm still seeing the second one. So it might be my internet that's gone out. Okay. So what I'd like to do now is take a brief look at the structure of the five units in this new edition. The slide you're looking at, looking at the world is the name of the first unit. It really is a short introduction to how we want to have um, how we want to set up the book for the use in the rest of the chapters. It's a short introduction to issues and issue analysis. And the second edition subtitle, or the third edition subtitle, has been changed to Investigating World Issues. So this is really the focus of the, um, of the book. This short, short introduction includes um, material to help students understand topics like worldview and bias and the role of media in what we, uh, what we read and hear. And by using this information, it will help students unpack the other information that they're going to read as they go through the rest of the book, but also as they might do research online and read other, other content pieces around, what they're, around the topic. We also provide a framework for issues analysis, and this uses the concepts of, concepts of geographic thinking, and this is supported by a case study as a model of inquiry. So we walk the students through this framework we give them questions that um, they might want to, uh, to think about or ask themselves as they're working through this framework. And then we provide a modeled inquiry to help cement that understanding. It will also help them apply, apply this understanding as they look at other cases in the book. We also have kept, um, uh, sorry, this introduction also includes the three, the three, three themes that are woven into the rest of the topics. And lastly, the uh, unit one provides several models that can be used to compare countries. We kept um, some of the country groupings that we had in the last edition, but we've also added some new ones so that there are things like the MEDCs and the LEDCs um, and other ways that students can group countries so that they can use that as they analyze um, and do the activities in the rest of the book. We think it's best to start with unit one uh, because this provides a solid grounding for students with the tools that they will need to use and apply in activities in the rest of the units. As you move into the other units in the book, um, you can use them in any particular order. Um, I know that teachers like to use some, some topics first and some topics in a certain sequence. We have, however, uh, provided notes in the teacher's guide so that if you are using the chapters out of numeric sequence, you'll know that if there's something that the students need to work on before they get to work into that unit so that you can actually make sure they have the prior knowledge that they can uh, use to work with those, those topics and concepts. So unit one is the introduction looking at the world. Unit two, if we go on to unit two, we're now looking at demographics. And this is a population unit. Barbara, did your side change? Yep, we're on unit two. Okay, sounds good. So in this case, we're looking at um, the human impact on the environment. We're looking at um, changing populations, increasing population, decreasing population, what that means for the country. We're looking at how quality of life is impacted by population. And then we're also looking at all the obstacles that stand in the way of improving quality of life in, in all parts of the world. So unit three is economic issues. And this unit has been refocused to look at the economies of the country, of, of various countries. Um, we look at how those economies are affected by globalization. We look at how um, governments are spending their money and what they're spending it on. We're looking at economic disparity and we're also looking at economic stability. This, um, as I said, this has been revamped. Rather than focusing on international debt and, and monetary funds and things like that, this is looking more at the realities of economic country. 
and will get your kids thinking about um, opportunity costs. If they spend money on the military, will they have money for education? Those types of things. So we're really asking some hard questions for the students to work with in this, this particular unit. Unit four is still focused on the environment. In this case, unit four has been expanded. We've moved food and agriculture into this unit. Um, we've also looked at, um, in terms of the, the approach that we've taken, we've really taken a hard approach and hard line looking at climate change and, and looking at this as the um, 21st century issue. In case you think the polar bear looks familiar on this uh, particular unit cover, we've kept the polar bear because the polar bear is a symbol of climate change around the world. Um, but in this instance, it's not so much about focusing on the polar bear's habitat and the disappearing habitat, it's on the impact that climate change is having around the world for all people. We're looking at um, energy, we're looking at land and forest issues, we're looking at water issues and air issues. We're looking at um, things like the government policies and practices that protect the environment or ones that perhaps do not protect the environment as much as they, as they should or could. We're looking at the concept of global commons and, and who actually owns the resources and, um, and what resources are essential for life. And we're looking at the distribution of natural resources and um, is our sustainable practices in, in place or are we using our, our resources too quickly. Throughout all these units, um, we have provided information and content example, but we also provide websites for the students to, to use for further research. So that will also help keep um, an, uh, a unit like this up to date because things are changing rapidly in this area. And then unit five is political issues. And again, this is one that, that we have revamped and expanded. We've taken a broader look at, um, at conflict and cooperation. We've, we've really looked at um, things like failed states. We've added uh, that information. We've looked at conflict and terrorism in this particular unit. Uh, we've brought in human rights. Um, this looks at global power structures and also world response to conflicts. In this case, we're looking at um, what are the agents of change? Are there you know, positive ways of change? Are there negative ways of change? And we've also looked at the social aspect of change in this particular unit. Any other questions at this point, Barbara? Um, one question about the um, curriculum that um, was used for this book. What is the base, which provincial, which province is the base of the curriculum? Uh, the, the book will work with um, curriculums across the country. We've um, done correlations to Ontario, to um, Manitoba, to BC, and to Newfoundland. So it will work in, in those specific provinces with the correlations. At present, there are no um, courses uh, for Saskatchewan. That curriculum is in development, and as is Alberta. Um, but the content is broad world issues content so that um, it will, it's, it's not linked so closely to a specific uh, curriculum that you can't include any of the, um, the provisions out. And we have a question just about what grades is it for? Uh, the courses that are um, in place right now across the country are grade 12 for the most part. Are grade 12, you said? Yes, grade okay. 12. Great, thank you. So now I have a few pages that I'd like to just show how the, um, uh, the book design and uh, some of the features that we've, that we've talked about. Um, on the page that you're seeing now, this is an example of how we've embedded the themes throughout the book um, in a very overt way. So at the top, you can see an arrow that says theme example, and it's going down to a spot on the page that's a pull-out quote. And this one in particular is quality of life. We have these quotes throughout the book. They're pull-out quotes from the, um, from the narrative, and they will be different colors for the different themes. So we have um, this kind of orangey-red quality of life. Uh, there's one for that is in green font for um, sustainability, and there's one in blue font for um, globalization. 
we also use these um, the little icon on the left that has the Q or the S or the G, and we also label um, activities at the end of chapter questions uh, with these icon initials so that you can know if there's a question that's related to a specific theme as well that you want the students to work with. We've updated um, the stats and used accessible colors. Um, in many cases, uh, in, in some cases, students have difficulty um, with colors. If students are colorblind, certain colors um, on charts and graphs and maps will make data disappear. And it's quite a remarkable experiment. But if you look at some of the charts and graphs, um, some lines will actually disappear so students can't even access the information that's on there. So all of our books um, that we produce in social studies have, have looked at those accessible colors to make sure that the colors and the tones and the shades that we use will allow students who might have um, this, this problem um, so that they can, can work with the materials in our resources. The page that you see on the left where it says, where are the consequences of population growth? That's a chapter opener. And the key terms are shown there on the left-hand side. And these are key course concepts. These key course concepts are, are in bold on the page. They're identified um, as such in the glossary. The glossary is really made up of those, those key terms. And it, if the students can work with key, these key terms, they will, get, they will understand the basics of the, of the course and the basics of what makes up world issues around the world. For other difficult vocabulary that might, um, might be part of what the students are reading, that vocabulary is defined at point of use. So we're trying to make sure that the students have access um, to, the, to the vocabulary as well as the key concepts in a couple of different ways. We also have chapter focus questions on this page. And these questions really are the ones that the students and teachers can use to um, to guide the thinking, guide the understanding as they're working through each of the chapters. Thanks, Barbara. We'll go on to the next one. Okay. So this is an example of the case study. In this case, um, we're using an example um, from Kerala. And Kerala was in the news recently uh, related to COVID in terms of, of um, control of the, of the virus and that sort of thing. So the, um, the real world examples um, related back to key concepts or the topic. In this instance on the right hand side, um, you'll see that uh, we have a small little purplish icon um, that says inquiry. So this would be an example of an inquiry activity that you could use with your students. Um, there are websites that we link to this and uh, the students can conduct further research on this as well. Case studies typically are two pages in length. In some cases, um, maybe a half a page. Sometimes they're just jumping off points for the students to do further research. And they are interspersed throughout all the chapters in the resource. Next slide, Barbara. Um, what, uh, we have a question actually right now. What are the tasks associated with the case studies? Sometimes there are questions that, um, that students have to use to unpack the case study. Um, sometimes there are more critical thinking activities that the students would work with in terms of looking at comparing um, information from that case to the examples in the, in the book. Um, so it's a range of things. Great, thank you. The, um, the slides that you're seeing now from the chapter questions this shows the breakdown of the categories of questions um, for the knowledge, thinking critically, apply and connect, and the extend your thinking. The labels that you see there link to the geographic thinking concepts. So we've labeled them so that you can see that the students are working with a range of those critical thinking concepts or geographic thinking concepts. And we also have the small icons at the back of each of the, um, the questions that show or link to the theme, whether it's sustainability or quality of life or globalization. So it helps you get a balance of what the students are working with as well. In terms of the um, extend your thinking, in many cases, um, the students need to do further research to answer these questions. 
So again, these link to that inquiry um, focus, um, research, that sort of thing in terms of what the students would be working on in, in those activities. The apply connect um, categories really help the students apply their thinking to another situation or a related situation from the content in, the, in that chapter. And the next slide, Barbara. So this is a, an example of the uh, working it out feature. So this is a refocused skill feature that was in the second edition. It's been refined to, to support um, the skills of critical thinking. So you've got more of the analysis um, skills that are in here that relate back to the, um, the topic in the chapter. So these key skills um, features support key concepts. They um, develop those critical thinking and analysis skills, and they also help the kids apply the geographic thinking. So I just have a two, uh, two examples here. So we have one that looks at the effects of colonization, and then this feature always has questions that we ask the students to help unpack their thinking in this particular skill activity. In some cases, a skill activity asks them to go to a website like Gapminder and do some analysis there as well. So those are the student book pages. I'm not sure if anybody has any questions on the student book, otherwise we'll move on to the teacher guide. I have no new questions. We did have a question about the teacher's guide support. So this is a great segue to this slide. So just great. wanted to know what, what, is, what is added to the teacher's guide. Okay. So the teacher guide um, is, um, is a print teacher's guide. It's, um, set up so that every chapter has a chapter overview and kind of hits the high, point, high points for that chapter um, in terms of the, um, the key concepts, which you want to make sure that the students are coming away with in terms of understanding. And again, this is that prior knowledge piece so that if there's something that um, is needed to work with the, the concepts in that chapter, we list it at the uh, beginning of the teacher's support so that you know what you have to work on to review with the students before you might use that chapter in case you're using the chapters out of the numeric sequence. Uh, the chapter, the, the teacher guide, um, each chapter has um, answers to questions and these are questions that might appear in captions, um, any of the features or the end of chapter sections. So all the answers are there, suggested answers for you. Uh, there are line masters. The line masters um, are generic so there could be outline maps, there could be um, uh, some, some thinking skills organizers, those sorts of things in the generic section. In the uh, specific line master section, there are ones that are specifically needed to, to work with the content in the activities. And then we also have assessment masters as well. You'll find these are in PDF format that we provide in the, um, uh, in the print student book or in, in the print teacher's guide. But we also have them as word format so that in case you want to make any modifications to them, you can. Uh, we also have a question bank that's there and the questions are multiple choice format, true, false, um, could be fill in the blank uh, or short answer. These are great for quizzes. Um, they're good for self-assessment. They're not meant to be um, a formal test that is, you know, statistically balanced in terms of we have a range of questions. This is meant to be your short check-ins for the, for the students. The files are available in Word for teacher modification. We also have the ArcGIS activities here as well. Again, we talked about that ArcGIS guide, that how-to guide, the quick guide, as well as the activities. And there are hot links in the activities, so they take you right to the ESRI site. You can start to use ArcGIS immediately with your students. There's also a companion website, and this companion website is meant to um, provide students who are using the print book quick access to the web links. So rather than having to um, have you provide the websites for them, um, if they go to this companion website, they will find the links for the, um, uh, the student book and the ArcGIS activities. And links at this site we update uh, and check annually. On this site as well is where, as a teacher, you'll find um, the links to the line masters in Word so that you can modify those. And the links to the question banks in Word so you can modify those. 
and there are three sites. So when you get the teacher's guide, um, you will have a URL at the front of the teacher's guide that will be listed by province. So if you're in Ontario, you have a, a separate companion website. If you're in BC, you have a companion website. And then we have a world issue site for the rest of the country. These companion websites are portals for other books. So in Ontario, it would also have our grade nine and grade 10 books on there. Um, if you're using the World Issues site, it would just be that you have access to the World Issues content. And lastly, um, in terms of pub dates and pricing, the student book is at um, Press Now, and it will be in stock um, on June 3rd. If anybody's looking for a print copy, the teacher's guide is in development as well, and um, it will be available August 1st. We're producing a student e-text for the English resource, and that will be available for back to school for August 15th. And this resource is also being produced in French, and the student book and the teacher's guide will be available at the end of August. Anything else, Barbara? Um. No, and no other, no other questions right now. I think that, oh, that was it, okay. So that's, um, that's it for our presentation. Um, we're happy to um, answer any questions uh, that you have. I'm just gonna let everyone that's on the call now let you all talk. Oh, I see one question here, Susan, on how recent current is the data, stats, and information? Um, the data is as, as recent as it's available um, from the source. So in, in some cases, if you're using census data, um, it's only certain data is released on certain dates. Um, but it's, it really varies throughout the book. We've tried to get data, so it is, it is you know, 2018, 2019, um, 2020, if something is available, but it just depends on the source of that data. Are there any other questions? I think most of you should be able to talk if you want to now. I'm just unmuting everybody. So at this time, I'll just thank everybody for uh, joining us today. Um, and you can definitely check out our website um, for more information. You will also, we have, we will have recorded this session. And so you'll be receiving a recording if you missed any part of it. Um, you should be getting that tomorrow. Oh, I'm just reading a comment from Cheryl. Thank you, Cheryl. Um, she's very excited. Um, she has or she is going to order her text and guide. And there's one from Suzette, so it will be available in French as well. Well, thank you very much for joining us today. And thank you, Susan, um, for presenting. And we'll stay on for a little bit longer if you have any more questions. And if not, thank you so much and enjoy the rest of your day. Stay safe.